you've been following along through Cotton's Week and Cotton E News, you'll notice that we've got a lot of articles and, uh, and spend a lot of uh, time on lint contamination. Again, this remains a huge problem around the world. Uh, we have the reputation of providing clean cotton, but we dare not relax our efforts in this area. We want to make sure that we continue to deliver bales of cotton to the textile mills, to our mill customers that are free of any material that might cause them a contamination problem as they spin and weave and knit yarns into cotton products. One of our latest efforts is this contamination-free cotton effort, which is a direct mailing to producers and generators across the belt, as well as some other key people, reminding people of the importance of prior to harvest, during harvest, and post harvest to keep their eye out for contaminants, see what they're seeing, and if necessary, get down off the harvester, remove plastics, remove those things that they're finding in their fields that if they're picked up by the harvesting equipment, be it a picker, cotton picker, or a cotton stripper are gonna wind up in the seed cotton and not gonna be removed at the cotton gin. By the same token, reminding the gins and their gin crews to be vigilant, particularly at the Maju feeder as cotton comes into the gin, be sure and get uh, whether it's a round module or conventional module, get the wrap and the tarps removed completely and make sure and inspect the module and make sure they're not leaving anything uh, that would get into the ginning system and possibly be shredded up into small pieces and wind up in the bale of cotton at the bale press. What we've heard from both the, some of our domestic mail customers as well as our foreign mail customers that they're seeing more uh, foreign materials uh, non-cotton materials uh, in our machine harvested cotton. Uh, it's not just us, but it's other growths of cotton around the world are experiencing this phenomena. So that means that we've got to be extra diligent to address these concerns and make sure that, that we keep these problems at a minimum. One of our most recent efforts, matter of fact, just started recently through Cotton's Week and E-News is asking growers and generous and, and anybody that, that's traveling through the countryside just to show us what they're seeing in the fields by taking a cell phone out, taking a picture, and then sending that picture to keep it clean at cotton.org so we can get a better handle on what is being found in the cotton fields across the cotton belt. It's a matter of reputation and it's a matter of uh, dollars and cents for the growers and, and it, it can or will impact the growers bottom line if at some point in time we get the reputation of not caring about how clean our cotton is and not being sure that we provide our customers with as pure and clean a cotton as we can grow. As I've talked to not only producers and generous but warehouse people about uh, contamination concerns. I had a warehouseman recently brought up the fact that said he, whenever he, he goes to his gins prior to the season and says, you know, those, those first few bales that you run through the gin as you kind of cleaned out the rust and get your equipment updated and there may have been animals in the top of the gin that leave feathers, fur, or other materials that are found in lint found in bales at textile mills and it again you know we think that that doesn't happen but it does and we've got warehousemen and generous here in the United States that have had some experience with that from that reason those first few bales it may be that the gen may want to own those bales rather than let them get into the stream and run the hazard or potential of causing contamination problem downstream and find another home for those bales, even though they may be grade-wise equal to other bales of cotton, just knowing the fact that, again, during the ginning process, during that startup process, there's gonna be unintended consequences that may occur that result in some foreign materials, whether it be feathers, fur, string, plastic wrap, other things that have gotten into the system more or less needs to be flushed out and isolated so that it doesn't get into their marketing stream.